Well, good morning. And welcome to the early days of autumn. It's a beautiful morning here in Cambridge. And as you can see, the sun's already starting to hit the fence mounted solar panels. But today I want to talk about something a little different. Now, for those of you that have been around the channel for, well, pretty much since we started this journey, you'll remember about a year ago, I put in a heat pump tumble dryer. So one of the reasons we chose a heat pump tumble dryer was that they're supposed to use significantly less energy to dry your clothes. Now, I've got nearly a full year's worth of data. So we're going to take a look at that and say, has it actually saved us any money? Was it worth putting the extra cost into the new tumble dryer or should we just have bought a cheap condensing dryer? But then we're going to take a look at dishwashers because very recently we've had to replace our dishwasher. And I started looking at and saying, is there such a thing as a heat pump dishwasher? Yes, there is. Did we buy one? No, we didn't. But we still ended up with a heat pump dishwasher. So with that, let's head into the kitchen and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me give you some numbers. So our tumble dryer is a Miele uh, heat pump tumble dryer. It looks and works and feels exactly like any other tumble dryer that you've ever used. The only difference is because of the way the heat pump technology works, it can take a little bit longer to dry your clothes. So on average, what might dry in 50 minutes to an hour might take an hour 20 in a heat pump tumble dryer. But here's where it really pays for itself. An average condensing dryer, depending on the size of the load you put in it, will take anywhere from almost three kilowatt hours up to nearly five and a half kilowatt hours to dry a load of washing. This tumble dryer uses 0.3 of a kilowatt to dry the same amount of laundry uh, and give you it ready to go with 0.3 of a kilowatt. So in a minute, we're going to go back out to the office and we're going to work out how long would this take to pay for itself based on those numbers. But I also mentioned heat pump dishwashers. Now, our dishwasher that I'm standing behind here is an integrated dishwasher. It started making some very strange noises. So we started doing some research and it was going to be quite expensive to get the whole pump mechanism replaced in it and replacing the pump in what is effectively a 15 year old dishwasher where the baskets are starting to rust just didn't make any sense. So we looked at what are our options? Well, our options were replace it like for like, or could we get a heat pump dishwasher? Now heat pump dishwashers do exist. Now the same technology that exists that goes into tumble dryers could probably be easily integrated into a dishwasher. At least that's what I thought. And there are companies that have done this. There's a, a Beko one that's out there that's getting reasonable reviews. Um, and there are a couple of other manufacturers who are starting to experiment with it but we weren't willing to take the risk. Just like when we installed our main heat pump on the house, I said I didn't want to be a beta tester for a company with these kind of appliances. The same applied to the dishwasher. So we went with a completely standard dishwasher with a resistive electric heating element. But we can still power it from the heat pump. Now, this was something that I didn't know about modern dishwashers. So apologies if everybody already knows this and I'm really late to the party. But some modern dishwashers let you fill the dishwasher from your hot water supply. We've specifically chosen a dishwasher that has this feature. So instead of plugging it into the cold water supply, filling the dishwasher with cold water, then using the resistive heating element to heat the hot water from cold all the way to whatever temperature it needs to wash the dishes, we plug it into the hot water supply. That means it takes the water from our hot water tank upstairs that water is already at 43 degrees because that's the temperature we keep our water at in the tank. So that means the resistive heating element only has to take the water from 43 degrees up to 60 degrees to clean the dishes. So what difference does that make? How much energy does this dishwasher now use on average compared to our old dishwasher? So in its final days of operation, I put a smart plug on the back of our old dishwasher and I was able to get uh, a number of cycles at different temperatures to try and work out what the average consumption of a, a standard dishwasher would be. 
And it would use anywhere between about 2.7 kilowatt hours for a, this is for full loads, a full load on the eco setting. That would be the setting that takes a, a few hours to wash all the way to four kilowatt hours for a setting that was to be ready in 60 minutes. This particular dishwasher on its 60 degree setting with a full load uses 0.7 of a kilowatt hour because it's not having to heat the water all the way from cold to get it to hot. So let's head back to the office. We'll take a look on the whiteboard and we'll figure out if these things will ever pay for themselves. Okay, so welcome to the office. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through on the whiteboard the running costs of both the dishwasher and the tumble dryer. And we're gonna look at what is it gonna to take to have them pay themselves back? Now, normally when we buy kitchen appliances, we don't think about payback periods because most appliances don't have a payback period. But if you're investing in technologies like heat pumps, everyone expects you to say, well, when's it gonna pay for itself? Because it was a lot more expensive. So we're actually gonna run through and see, will they ever pay for themselves? So let's start with the tumble dryer. And I've had to make some assumptions here um, because everybody's different, everybody's usage patterns are gonna be different. So I'm just gonna give you my data and you can take from that and you can work out the calculations for yourself. But we paid just, uh, just under 900 pounds for the tumble dryer about a year ago. Um, I'm gonna assume that the electricity costs over its life are gonna be fixed. We all know that's not true, that electricity prices are gonna go up. But to keep the calculation simple, um, we're gonna say electricity costs 26 pence per kilowatt hour. That's what it is here. If you were to buy it without any smart tariffs, without any battery storage or solar or anything else, you'd be paying about 26 pence a kilowatt hour. And I'm gonna assume about 200 loads a year. Now, if you remember earlier, I showed you on the Tumble Dryer app, it uses about 0.3 of a kilowatt to, uh, to dry all the clothes. Um, that means it costs us about 7.8 pence per load to dry our clothing. Now, if we were to do that in a normal tumble dryer based on just average usage, uh, average electricity across multiple different brands, um, I actually had ChatGPT go and give me some averages, we'd come out with a price per load of about 65 pence. Okay, so based on those numbers, we're gonna be saving approximately 57 pence per load by using the heat pump tumble dryer. That means over the course of a year, running about 200 loads, that is gonna save us 114 pounds 60p. Apologies for my handwriting. Um, which, when you divide that by the cost of the tumble dryer means its payback period is approximately 7.8 years. Now you might say that seems like an awful long time to get payback from an appliance. But bear in mind, our previous tumble dryer, which was just, uh, I believe it was a hot point, um, ran for about 12 years before it started showing any signs of problems. So it's quite likely that uh, certainly the Melee that we're, we bought will last significantly more than 7.8 years. So we will get a return on our investment. But what about the dishwasher? Now, if you remember, the dishwasher doesn't have a heat pump built into it. We're actually using the hot water that our house heat pump is generating and storing in the tank to, uh, to heat up some of the water. So let's take a quick look and we'll just save that. And we'll do the same for our dishwasher. Now there's gonna be some slight difference here because we're also paying the cost of heating the water by using the heat pump. But the heat pump is incredibly efficient. So it's not gonna change the numbers drastically. But again, we're gonna work on a purchase price. It was just shy of 900 pounds. Uh, electricity at 26 pence, exactly the same. And again, about 200 loads a year because we don't run our dishwasher every single day of the week. We wait till it's full, but on average about 200 loads a year. Now, if you remember, I said that our dishwasher uses about 0.7 of a kilowatt to heat that water that's already been preheated by the heat pump. So it's costing us about 18.2 pence per load to run the dishwasher. Compare that to a normal dishwasher, and certainly my old dishwasher, which was coming in at about 91 pence per load. That means if we're going to look at our savings per load, we're going to be saving about 73p 
every single time we run that dishwasher. That means over the course of a year, that's about 145 pounds 60p. It's quite a significant saving. And that means the dishwasher is gonna pay for itself in six years. Now again, if you've just got a standard dishwasher that's using a resistive heating element, it's never gonna pay for itself because it's, there's no economies in that, in that system. We're saving money and that money is going towards offsetting the cost of the dishwasher. Now again, my last dishwasher, which was a Zanussi, um, for those that remember the old Zanussi adverts, the one that came down from space, um, was 15 years old. And it was only now just starting to have problems. It's run perfectly for 15 years. So I think we'll easily get our money back on this dishwasher. Now remember, this is not a heat pump dishwasher. There are others out there, like the, the Beko one that I showed you earlier. Those have integrated heat pumps. That's not what we're comparing here. What we're comparing here is a, a dishwasher that's taking its hot water from our hot water cylinder that's already been preheated by the heat pump. But in six years time, it will have paid for itself. So I hope you found this interesting. If nothing else, the, the takeaway from this video is that when you come to replace your kitchen appliances, don't just necessarily go for the best deal. Take a look at the individual devices and ask yourself, will this device pay for itself? If you already have a heat pump, you're already heating hot water and you're doing that efficiently, it might be worth paying a little bit more for something that can plug into that hot water system and take advantage of your existing infrastructure. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, a like and subscribe would be really appreciated. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.